yellow, purple, fluorescent white, what to look for when buying a grow light. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through all the different features and what's really important so by the end of it, you can go and purchase with confidence. I've also got four of the top Amazon sellers and an Urban Leaf Wild card and some special measurement equipment. So I'll take a closer look at them and give you a side-by-side -side table at the end of the video. A feature you'll see on most grow lights is their wattage or their energy use. Now this isn't directly important because how they convert that energy into a plant available light is what really matters. But something that's worth noting is that you'll see the compact fluorescents have to use a lot more energy to produce the same amount of light as the LED globes. Here we have a side-by-side -side of the PAR, energy use, and an estimate of what it would cost to run one of these for a year. We've used New York City electricity prices and assumed they're on for 16 hours a day. Uh, but if either of those assumptions are off for your area, you may want to adjust them. Another thing that can help the light reach the plant are optics, or lenses and reflectors that direct the light. The first three lights we tested don't have any optics, so they rely on the lampshade to direct the light downward. We also looked at two different types of optics, one where each LED has its own lens and one with a large single lens. To understand the optics, it's helpful to look at these two similar bulbs. They're both LED, but because of the optics on the bulb on your left, the PAR value is about three times higher at the plant leaf. What makes that even more impressive is that this bulb has lower wattage. Without optics, light from the bulb degrades very quickly with distance. However, with optics, it maintains that power for a longer distance. In the charts on the screen, you can clearly see which of these bulbs has optics and don't have optics based off of how their light degrades over distance. Lastly is the color of the bulb. I've taken a few pictures through my spectrometer and they fall into a few groups. First, the compact fluorescent light. It's pretty obvious. It has a very limited spectrum, just made up of a few colors that we can see with these bands. Next is the purple LED. It's pretty obviously just a mixture of red and blue lights. You'll see lights this color really often in the grow light world because they limit the light output to the most plant efficient colors. Finally, we've got a few full spectrum LEDs. As you can see, they have a good amount of everything. I personally like fuller spectrums because they cover more of the pathways that plants use light. The exact ways that plants use these different wavelengths is still something that scientists are figuring out, but we already know it impacts things like color, shape, and taste, in addition to growth, which is the big one. All of these have a decent spectra, so I think the bigger question around color and beam angle is how they look in your living space and how they can kind of integrate into the design of your home. So this is the Sun Blaster Compact Fluorescent Light. The light color definitely does have that cool fluorescent feel to it, but when it's covered by the shade fully, it's not that bad. It's also pretty weak, so I'd have to put my plants really close to it in order for them to get enough energy from the bulb. Here we have the Ener Eco LED. Whoa! Okay, so with the mixture of the super high power, no optics, and purple color makes this a pretty intense light that I'm a little bit nervous about having in my kitchen, but I guess we'll see. So here I have the Miracle LED. Looks wise, it's pretty similar to the CFL, but I think it's got a little bit of a warmer color and it doesn't really have that fluorescent vibe. Um, I'd also have to put my plants pretty darn close to it in order to get enough light to really grow uh, any edible plant. So this is the Sansai LED. The optics we talked about before let me place it at a pretty good distance and still get enough energy to my plants. It's got a nice warm color and it's for better or for worse got this really sharp clipping which means it goes from being bright to dark over the matter of a few inches, kind of giving it a spotlight feel. Finally is our wild card, the Urban Leaf 7 Watt LED globe. Uh, it's got the warmest color of all the ones we're testing and it's got no real edge. Compared to the Sansai, your plants will need to be a bit closer uh, because it's got uh, a much lower power draw. So it's probably better for something small like a few herbs opposed to large plants. Here's a table of the different things we measured along with other stuff like their rating and cost. 
There are links for all the products below, and we'll check the comments for questions, so please let me know if there's anything we missed. Here I've set up all five grow lights along with the control to see what will grow best. We've got globe basil, marigold, and dill under each light. Leave a comment with which one you think will win, and be sure to subscribe to get updates on the experiment. That's all for now. Happy gardening, guys.